Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first career webinar of From Full to Race. I am joined today by Katie McMahon, and she is a racing coach and lecturer in race and a career coach for Irish professional jockeys. She has worked in the horse racing industry since she was 14 and has experience as an apprentice jockey, an exercise rider, and an assistant trainer. She also has experience in administration with Horse Racing Ireland. So thanks so much for joining us, Katie. We're delighted to have you on for our first careers webinar. Um, you have a wealth of experience in many different areas within the horse racing industry. Would you like to tell us a bit more of how you got started in the industry? Uh, hi, and um, thanks a million for having me. Um, yeah, so I got started, I suppose, I was that weird little kid in school who loved horses. Um, my dad was a jockey and we had ponies growing up. Um, I suppose I, got, I really got into racing um, when I was very young. In the second year, a local trainer moved in and I would ride my pony up and down the road, looking in and seeing what it was all about. And he invited me in one day and I just started working weekends for him. Um, then there was a local young fella who was in transition year. And he had signed up for the racing apprentice jockey course in race. Uh, so it's the same course as I race it now. Um, so it's a trainee jockey course. And he was doing it for his TY. Um, and the minute I heard about it, it's a 10 month course. And I wasn't really interested in school at the time. So my parents uh, agreed once I had finished my junior cert, I could attend the trainee jockey course. Um, so I did that for 10 months um, I then um, traveled down to Carlo and I signed on as an apprentice jockey for a man called Sean Tracy in Carlo. Um, I worked for him for about four years and then recession hit. So I moved to Australia and that's where I worked as an assistant trainer. Um, I spent almost five years in Australia um, and kind of you know I was missing home an awful lot I originally only went out for six weeks actually and ended up staying out there for that for five years so wow yeah. that's an instant yeah. <laughs> um I loved it um but you know I, I always wanted to return to Ireland Um, I got really interested in coaching over there as well they have a different system for coaching jockeys over there it's more of a mentorship and um, so I got really really interested in that and um, so I came home and I worked in horse race in Ireland for a little while and then I got a job in race so yeah it's been a journey. <laughs> that is a fantastic wealth of experience like I said earlier actually we just go back which was your first role when you started out after you'd finished your training? Um, as an apprentice jockey so uh, like I said I, I moved down to Carlo I had only turned 17 Mm -hmm. um moved to Carlo and I think I had signed on then which is signed on to a master to do an apprenticeship within a couple of weeks oh, so wow. yeah yeah it all happened very quickly but um at that age sure you know yourself YOLO you just kind of go with it <laughs> <laughs> um, um can you actually can you tell us a little bit more about the role of an apprentice jockey in general so maybe a, what you might do in a day or even just little bits and pieces of information yeah, um, so just to have a bit of clarity on an apprentice jockey. So an apprentice jockey is only for flat. Um, the weights are a lot lighter, so it tends to be more people age 16, 17, 18, 19. That's where their career would begin because um, they're lighter. Um, you work in a stable the same as anybody else. Um, you sign on to your master. Um, and the idea behind it is you are inexperienced. So you sign on to a trainer and then he will allow you to ride horses and races and um, to give you experience um, and also training before and after the race as well. Um, so, yeah, you, you work as a normal stable hand. It's Monday to Saturday morning and they're, they're your general hours in a racing yard anyway. So um, you do everything from exercising the horses, bringing horses racing um, leading up and then riding the horses in races when you get the opportunity as well. Great, that sounds like um, a really great role. And you said that was out of the course in race, was it? You became an apprentice jockey. Yeah, that's how I started. Now it isn't mandatory. And um, by all means, you can um, approach a trainer at any age. Um, and if they're willing to sign you on, um, you can do so. For me, race was a better uh, option for me because you get an education there as well. So I also got my level four there. 
um, which, which was a great asset to me. Race allows you to get training to be a jockey and then it keeps you, keeps your foot in the door with education as well. So that that was the route I took. It is a mandatory. You, you can go straight into a yard and, and sign on. Great. And is that something that do you have to wait now until you've done a junior cert before you go into the course at race or... Yeah, yeah. Um, minimum junior cert. We don't take um, any trainees that are going to be under 16 before Christmas. So if you're 15 at the start of term, you must be 16 before December. And um, so that kind of is that age group where they would finish junior cert. Um, very, very rarely now uh, race would take on someone without a junior cert because they're just not the applicants you get. Nearly everybody would, would have a junior cert at that stage. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, and at race at the moment, so you are a racing coach and a lecturer. Is that correct? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. Perfect. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah, you want to tell us a little um, bit more about that role? Uh, yeah, of course. So uh, my racing coach role would be uh, in regards to practical training. So we would have our trainee jockeys spend from eight o'clock till half twelve in the barn. We have 40 horses, x race horses, um, all different varieties of, you know, very strong ones, very spooky ones, to very, very quiet ones where beginners could learn how to ride as well. And um, so we would give practical coaching. And then in the afternoon, every trainee jockey then attends school for three hours to get their level four. So I would lecture in stable and yard routine, which is general horse care. And then we also do one level five module, which is race horse care and exercise, which is more specific to racing. So that's where you learn the rules of racing and um, how to take a horse racing, how to care for a thoroughbred, because they are a, a different breed than your average pony out in the field. And um, they're, you know, they're um, super fragile. They need a lot of work, a lot of care. So it's specific to looking after a racehorse mm. yeah I think it's very important to know exactly what you're doing when you're dealing with such a large animal anyway um and your role as assistant trainer was that when you were in Australia sorry I might be is that where you did that, that that's right yeah um that that is um that is basically what it says on the tin you assist the trainer um so I worked for a man called Philip Stokes and he had 60 horses um, in Australia, you travel all around Australia. Australia is gigantic. Um, so a trainer would have horses running between four hours on one day and have another meeting maybe four hours in the other direction. So the trainer would go in one direction and I'd go in the other. Um, so that would be representing him at races, uh, tacking up the horse, dealing with owners, dealing with jockeys. And then your general day to day assisting with training plans and, and stuff like that. It's really rewarding and really, really interesting as well. So I'd recommend it for anybody who, you know, um, you can ride as an assistant trainer, but it, it, it isn't about riding. You know, if you have a head for it and race planning and stuff, the riding wasn't for you. Um, it's definitely an interesting job and, and good fun. Great, good to good to hear. Um, and when it comes to jockey coaching, was that something that was difficult to get into? Have have jockeys always had coaches, or is it a newer thing? Uh, it's a very new thing in Ireland. Um, we actually don't have an official qualification for it yet in Ireland. Um, it's more, I suppose, mentoring would be very usual in racing yards. Um young riders, uh, people coming into racing would often go to a senior member of staff and get advice and support. Um, race is the only racing school in the country. So we do, um, we, I've done a, co a coaching qualification, um, but I haven't actually done a specific jockey coaching qualification. So hopefully that's in the mix. Um, but look, it, it's the same as any, like I'm sure a lot of TY students would have, have football coaches and swimming coaches, all this kind of thing. The role of a coach is support um, and, you know, help them figure out things themselves, help them figure out their skill set and really just offer feedback and advice. Um, you know, it, it can be really transferable to any sport when it when it comes to coaching, really. Yeah, I think probably the most important attribute would be um, maybe a, a people person, approachable, a teacher, those kind of attributes, I, think. I would imagine. Yeah, I think so, especially dealing um, with people who are 16, 17, 18. There's a lot going on in your life anyway. Um, so just, yeah, just a bit of support and someone they can come to if they need advice. Perfect. I actually have a question that's come in for you here, Katie, now. So one of the questions is, what has been your favourite job so far? 
Um, that, that's a tough one because I actually loved every job I was in in a different way. Um, I suppose the most gratifying job would definitely be my, my role now as a career coach and, and a jockey coach. Um, I get a lot of joy from seeing, seeing people progress and achieve their goals. Um, but in saying that, I being an apprentice jockey and riding winners is the best feeling you're you're ever going to get. Um, the same with assistant trainer. When you are dealing with a horse day in day out, um, almost twenty four seven, and again seeing them progress, um, you know it's it's really satisfying. Um, but for now, I'm I'm really content in in what I'm doing in in the coaching aspect of it. It's very rewarding. Great. Um, and another question that has come in, I think you maybe more or less answered this one, actually. Have horses always been part of your life? I think you had kind of briefly given a bit of information on that earlier on. Yeah, they have. But I, I don't think it's necessary. Um, like I said, we would get um, a lot of trainee jockeys into race now who have no horse experience. Um, but they have a really good attitude and, and they like animals in general, you know, and they're fit and it just comes very naturally to them so I would say with horses whether it's racing or not it, it's never ever too late they're amazing animals Um, you know they're they're really um they're they're a unique animal as well you know what I mean they they I find that people really have an affinity for them when they connect so mm -hmm. I would always encourage people to um get to know their local horses in Ireland we have horses like we have dogs so um, yeah, I it, it's not it's not necessary to have a horse experience to get into racing. Perfect. Thank you for that. Um, I have two more questions for you here. Dana has asked, do you ever feel like quitting when working with horses? I guess that means it, it's difficult to work with horses, I would imagine. Oh, I'd say once a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, I mean, they're big animals. It, it's tough. It, it's it's hard. I mean, you're out in the elements. Um, in the summer, you wouldn't get a better job. In the winter, it is tough. Um, they're unpredictable. They're dangerous. Um, stupid at times, you know, but... Uh, Look, they, it, it, it might pass your mind every now and again, but I find, and I, I'm speaking for myself, but I'm, I'm speaking from looking at a lot of people, once you get horses into your blood, it's very, very hard to get them out of it, you know, mm -hmm. and um, there is times where, you know, it's tough. And it's like I said, it, for me, it was more the, the elements. It, there's nothing worse than getting out in the wind and the rain at six o'clock in the morning in the middle of winter. And you're like, oh, I'd love a, an office job. But um, I did that and I did it for a short period of time. Back to the horses for me. So only in passing. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, I think outdoors is, is, you know, a lot of people's preference. It's not for not for everyone. And um, just for anybody who is out there, there's just a person asking whether they can ask a question. You can, of course, if you are looking to ask a question, you can pop it into the Q&A box. That's no problem. Now I have a question from, I believe it's Tiernan. Um, how many rides did you have as a jockey? Is that an easy question to answer? I'm not sure if you have the answer off the top of your head. I, I do actually, not many, Tiernan. <laughs> um, I had 16 rides, I had two winners. Um, unfortunately, I was 17. I probably wasn't as disciplined as I should have been with my weight. Um, and once I rode my couple of winners, I was quite happy to move on to, uh, you know, becoming an exercise rider and getting in. I was very interested in the training of horses at the time. So look, it's not too late. Sometimes I tell you with the idea of taking out my amateur license again, which is something you can do on a part time basis, riding bumpers and a few point to point. So like I said, it, it's never too late. Great. 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 Oh, I think sometimes my volume is a little strange. Um, now, I think I'll just give a last call maybe for questions there, if anybody has any more questions for Katie. And just a reminder to anybody who is out there as a participant, this will be available to watch back on our YouTube channel if you did miss the beginning of it. So it will be going up on our YouTube, I would imagine, by tomorrow. So if you missed the beginning, you can always catch up there. And um, now is, I guess, your last opportunity to ask any questions for Katie. So I'll just give you a little second there. But Katie, thanks a million anyway for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. And I really appreciate you taking part in our careers webinar for, for Bold Race. 
I think everybody is happy enough with that. So it was really great to hear an overview of all your experience so far. And we wish you the best of luck with everything. Um, and particularly, I guess, the, the jockey coaching now, if that's a very new thing to Ireland. Um, we actually have another question coming in here now, if you don't mind. So a question from Jane. She said, would it be too late to start in fifth year? I'm assuming she means as a jockey. Um, she might clarify there for a second, but would it be too late to start in fifth year? Absolutely not. Um, most people come into racing, 16, 17, 18. Um, even in race, uh, we would take in 18, 19 year olds. What I would say to you is um, the only requirement I would recommend for someone that wants to get into it is that you must be fit. Um, it can be super hard. If you're unfit, um, you're, you're going to find it tough. Um, so that would be my only, you know, recommended requirement for getting into racing. Um, we race also run an exercise rider course and we would have participants that are 27, 28, 29 that want to make the transition from sport horse to racing and, and they do that quite easily. So it, it's never too late. It's just if you're physically capable and get as fit as possible, it'll happen a lot easier for you. Great. I'm sure you be happy with that answer. Um, last question here. Was it hard to adapt to riding on different race courses? It can be. Um, it definitely it is. Uh, horses are very different. Um, there's no one set way to ride a race horse. So I understand in show jumping and dressage and this, which wouldn't be my discipline now at all, but you tend to learn one way to ride and it's making your horse adjust to, to that style of riding. In racing, it's different. Race horses are taught to go, stop, turn left, turn right. And you want to keep them going as fast as they can and as balanced as they can. Some horses like a very long rein, some horses like a very short rein, uh, some horses are quirky. So again, the fitter you get and the stronger you get, the more confident you get. And you then adjust to your different way, your style of riding different types of horses. It does take a little bit of work, but if you stick at it, um, you do you can figure out different types of horses and it, it will come very naturally then on on how to ride them perfect that is brilliant so katie thanks a million again for joining us i think we'll yeah. sign off on that and for anyone who missed the beginning of course the recording is going to be available to watch back on youtube so thanks a million to everyone involved and thanks a million for those brilliant questions and we'll see you at the next careers webinar <laughs>